And welcome to another episode of Halcyon Blink. I'm your host, Lauren Risley. And on this occasion, let's kick off with some division. Uh, I really liked this game. Based on Tom Clancy's license, uh, the idea is that you are some kind of secret agent, I want to say. You're part of an organization, effectively, that's there to govern and police in times of great crisis and need to get these nifty little watches that glow orange. We are an elite, highly skilled group of embedded agents. They only call us when everything else has failed. And the idea is that a plague or some kind of infection has taken over Manhattan Island. It's been quarantined off. Most of the population are either dead, refugeed, if that's the word, or they've joined uh, various gangs or militias in Manhattan that have now seized control of the island. And it's down to you, agent, to take them down and retake Manhattan from the virus and these Terrible, terrible gangs. But when we get the call, we leave everything behind. We are the division. Sounds like a good premise. Uh, in terms of the story, though, it feels oddly limp wristed and quite light. Um, which is weird considering it doesn't have all the hallmarks of a game that has a weak story. You're your own protagonist, you don't have a name, you do a little bit of customization, but the customization options are laughable to be frank. I think they have one face for every demographic. Uh, there are male and female and multiracial. You can do something with your hair and your facial hair, I think. Uh, but beyond that, you're either white guy, black guy, Asian guy, kind of Asian guy, and uh, Chinese guy. And the female versions of those. And you have hair and goatees and whatever. Anyway, point being, is the thing that carries this game isn't necessarily the story, it's the gameplay. I gotta say, I really enjoyed this game in terms of its gameplay. Um, the game is internet only, um, which was kind of a drag at first because I didn't really grasp the fact that you needed to be in a team of four in order to succeed in this game. It's really hard, um, at least it was for me. I'm not a massive uh, third person shooter fan. I'm more of an RPG fan because I can taper things at my own pace take the game on in chunks, go back and, you know, level up in beast mode, come back and wipe the floor with opponents. In this game, you have to play missions pretty much at the level that you are, which means it always represents some degree of a challenge, especially if you decide to gun it alone. But the name of the game here is Cooperation. You have to coordinate with your team members in such a way that you can take down more powerful enemies, which leads me to a criticism I have of this game, which is the slight lack of realism with the gunplay. I mean, it's great. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the gunplay in this game. The diving from cover to cover, the snapping up, the blind fire, swapping from different guns, the sniping, the automatic fire, the switching to the single arm to be able to take down an enemy that's encroaching on your territory. The idea that you have to coordinate to flank your enemies, especially in bottleneck situations where enemies are coming thick and fast and you have to just slam the line! Fire back! Fire back! But, ultimately, it's a bit disappointing because the enemies ultimately amount to bullet sponges. There are enemies that you will, you will literally empty clips into. Just standing there, emptying these bastards into these guys just over and over and over again. And yet, they just keep coming forward with a smile on their faces. And two shots from them and you're dead! It's just the most ridiculous, takes you out of the experience kind of thing there is. Because even in something like Gears of War, the idea was that you could hurt your enemies as much as they could hurt you. The easier difficulties simply served to make it harder for them to kill you. On the harder difficulties, it just increased that amount of damage they could do to you, but ultimately you still felt you had a chance. In this game, playing alone is suicide. And to be perfectly honest with you, I wish I'd known that going in a bit more than the first few hours which were frustrating, grindy, almost laughable at points because you genuinely thought, wow, I can't do anything. I can't go anywhere in this game. The thing is, the coordination with your team has to be with friends. I've got to be honest with you. I played almost exclusively with strangers 
and the, the amount of times a player will just jump in, jump out, go from mission to mission without so much as a thank you or without so much as an acknowledgement of the help that you provided them when you had good teamwork. It's, uh, maybe it's telling of the community, I don't play online that much, but it was just, a, it was a disjointing experience going from one team to the next to the next, taking on missions and never really feeling like you got a sense of progression together. It was a, kind of a disappointment to me. Nevertheless, in terms of the other gameplay mechanics, you've got various abilities, skill trees that you can use. Ultimately, though, I only found maybe one or two that were actually helpful. The turret mechanic, uh, you haul a turret and it just acts as like a second man for you, drawing fire and dispensing fire, especially with the enemies. It was helpful to be able to flank them and hit them from behind because most enemies have some kind of weak point on their back that you can exploit for big damage as well as their head. Uh, the only other one that I could find that I thought was particularly helpful was the uh, the med kit that you could drop and autom automatically heals and revives people, and also uh, the seeker bombs, little roller bombs, which seemed a bit too futuristic for this world, considering we're dealing with a zombie virus that broke out, but, you know, whatever. In terms of the cooperation within these mechanics, though, it's helpful because you can use them to help your teammates. They can use different mechanics as well, different powers in order to help boost the team. It's great when it all works properly. The only other criticism I'd have of this game is that it does get repetitive as balls towards the end, especially when you're just free roaming. The activities within the world are kind of a little bit leaving, left a little bit to be desired. You've got collectibles like recordings, um, these weird holographic images that you come across, it brings up and you see like a scenario that's played out previously that's recorded on some kind of freeze frame tape that only records the audio for some reason. I don't know if they've ever heard of cameras or phones, but you know, whatever. I'm like, yeah, whatever. They're kind of okay to come across, but they don't, again, add anything to the story. They add something in terms of the circumstances that preceded these events, i.e. the virus, the uh, violent takeover of the city, but why not just let you play through certain elements of that? Why not have the first part of the game be about being activated and dealing with the aftermath of this violence, infected people, maybe zombies, I'm not saying you have to, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have a couple of crazed infected people that you've got to deal with on top of the gangs, like a big walking dead simulator, that would have been sweet. But nevertheless, you, you come across the aftermath. You mean, I get that they try to keep things like, it's, it's eerily quiet, the background noise, and things of that nature help paint the scene. There's not really any music except for when you're in combat and the occasional, da -da 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 -da, you know, sort of background soundtrack to keep you, you know, oh, you're playing a game and it's, uh, it's epic, you know, all that sort of jazz. It does move me on to something that the game also does extremely well. The graphics in this game, the graphics in this game are insane. I couldn't stop looking at certain aspects of the graphics, even 20, 30 hours into playing. Little things, like when you're walking along making snow prints with your feet in the snow, getting up onto something like a cab or a car or something that you think is a pre-rendered uh, background piece or, you know, some kind of, item that's in the world that's pre-rendered and you can shoot it and it makes the bullet hole but it doesn't do anything else. You can stand on it and even footprint. That blew my freaking mind! No! And the shooting as well, the shooting mechanics have an element of realism to them when you're not shooting enemies because the way that it dents the paint, the way that it indents the bonnets and the cars and the rocks and the way it chips away at things, the way it smashes glass, it's so realistic. It's ridiculous how much detail they've put into the graphics, considering that it's a whole city they've done. And I keep thinking back to things like Prototype and thinking this was the thing that was missing from that game. A sense of real depth of detail, because they had millions of NPCs and a whole city to roam around in, but it all felt repetitive and it all felt so dull and drab and almost detailless. This game has the exact opposite. The world actually does feel reasonably populated. It feels like it would do in an apocalyptic style scenario. And like I say, the feeling is exacerbated even more when you do come across a band of gang who are highly armed, just 
ruthless and they will gang up on you and they will surround you and kill you without a moment's thought. Which is why on missions and things of that nature it's so gratifying when you are in a good team when you finally repel them back. They use tactics, they try to flank you, they use explosives to drive you out or drive you back. You finally get them into a bottleneck situation. You team up on them, you start to push them back and then the boss arrives. Oh sh**. It's about to go down now and then you've got to take on the boss from all sides trying to draw his attention from one player to the next using explosions to try and draw him out of cover try to exploit his weaknesses it's a great experience when it all comes together but it's let down by a few other core components as well namely the boss battles Yes, I understand that lieutenants might need to be bullet sponges. I get that that's kind of a limitation of the mechanics of this game. But it didn't help that the big bosses, namely the final boss, are exactly the same. There's no creativity. There's nothing about the battles themselves or the stages that you need to be thoughtful about or need to take care with. You just shoot until you win. That in of itself is disappointing. So I, I have to see people's sense when it comes to that. But in terms of an overall gaming experience as a first person, sorry, third person shooter, I'd say that if they'd have bothered to make the story slightly more impactful, the characters a little bit more memorable considering that you do have NPCs and you do have a base of sorts a la Mass Effect, but you interact with them fleetingly and you don't really care about their motivations. They're just kind of there because they have to be there. They have to be human interests. Um, you know, they never come with you in missions, which is a shame because that would have added a lot in terms of their emotional connection with you. And that would have also helped the single player experience if you didn't want to co-op with other online players and you wanted to just maybe have more of a Mass Effect style experience where you can direct people to different objectives, tell them to focus fire on certain things and cover you and heal you in situations like that, rather than have to take on by your own when you don't want to team with some creepy decent idiot who just wants to scream da 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 down the microphone at you all the time, wearing head to toe pink camouflage like that's even remotely tactically relevant. It's just a slight disappointment. But overall, if I'm gonna give this game a rating, I'm gonna say it's, I'd say it's a seven or eight out of 10, eight. I'll say eight because I really enjoyed it. Ultimately, its flaws don't outweigh its positives for me because I enjoyed the experience overall. Now, I know a lot of people are saying the gameplay is repetitive, it lacks story, and it mainly, mainly the same criticisms I love about it, but I don't think they're enough to detract from the feeling of the world and the satisfaction in the gameplay and the progression because as you grind for new weapons and get more powerful weapons and buy more powerful weapons and gear, you can have more customization options as you go. And because the story doesn't really pick up, you focus more on your own character and grinding for things and competing with other people. I just enjoyed the overall experience and I'd recommend it to anyone who's looking for a decent third person shooter experience with the preconception of going online with friends to achieve a common goal because it will take you a good 20 hours or so to be able to get through the main story missions especially if you want to level up. The Dark Zone is the one thing I would probably recommend people stay away from. Just a giant waste of time for me. Just play the story through and then finish it there and leave it there. You can play the DLC if you want. I've played it. It, it, it not really worth it to be perfectly honest just complete the game with a story and leave it at that so that was the division thank you very much for watching this episode of halcyon blink please like share subscribe also check out some of the other channels in the description below uh if you feel so inclined please check out some of the other content i've produ been producing recently and before i've just hit a thousand views on one of my videos people how cool is that heading up to about eight thousand views in total now 140 odd subscribers so slowly but surely the channel is growing and it's because of you beautiful people that it's happening so i appreciate it once again thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves and i'll see you on the next i'll see you in blink